Hallelujah. God is a good God. In case you forgot, He is a good God. Hallelujah. And we came to celebrate today and we come to bless the Lord. Amen. The devil's already defeated. Hallelujah. So we came to give him praise. But before we do, before we give God praise today, I just thank God for who he is. Hallelujah. What he does and how he's changing our life. I thank God for that. But God put this in my spirit. Amen. So I do want to say this. I came today to decree and to declare the new ambassador for 2022 as we go into this new season established in the life of Pastor Greg Drumright. You are ambassador to this generation. As I looked at, as I looked at, the, at the presentation today, and seen how many times that you had to start and stop and start and stop and start and stop for this generation to let them know that they cannot be stopped. They're not quitters because they don't sit on a quitter. You are victorious and because you're victorious, I decree ambassador of this generation save these young people tell them to never quit never give up never stop trying never moving forward he did it for you he did it for you he did it for you Cause you know your life be jacked up, huh? You was laying out there praying. He took you to prayer meetings. Show you God don't never give up on you. He show you no matter what that you might come to campus next year and they close our place of worship. But God always gonna make a way. And you are unstoppable. Whatever God has called you to do, you are unstoppable. I wish you would just say that to yourself. I'm unstoppable. Hallelujah. 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 The devil can do whatever he want to do. But I'm unstoppable. <laughs> He ain't strong enough. He ain't smart enough. He ain't wise enough to stop the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost can't be stopped. Yes.
never be defeated.
because he never looked in the mirror and say how great he is. But he's a great man. And God is using him to do great things. I told him a couple of weeks ago, you just don't even know who you are. You don't know. Because you just go back what you see. God got great things in store for him. Huh? Because he's saving a whole generation. God got great things. And that's all right. You can talk about him. You can be jealous of him. He's been there. He got a t-shirt. And he's still moving. Hallelujah. Because you don't worry about what people are going to say. They always going to say something. But you got to stay with what God called you to be. Hallelujah. So I'm so honored today to be here to celebrate 19 years. I wouldn't be nowhere else. I want you to know you great. I, I'm going to get you 10 more enemies. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because you're doing it for God. And you can't be God given. No matter how much you try. He always going to do something so supernatural that you didn't even think of. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. Thank you, Lord God. We thank God for everybody that came to celebrate with him. All the ministers, the apostles, prophets, and teachers. Uh, Bishop Mitchell, we thank God for you. We thank God for this great congregation of believers. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Amen. How you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I thank God for that. Amen. You're no longer lost, but your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Hallelujah. That's the best decision you ever made in your whole life. God is with you. Who can be against you? Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have your Bible today, I won't be before you long. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. This is the word of the Lord. God gave me for this house because I love these young people. Amen. You are my future. Amen. And I come to celebrate you today. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse, um, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forth unto those things which are before I press toward them all for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for what you're going to speak in our spirit on today. We thank you, Lord God, that nobody's life will leave the same. We, as they go out today, God, they have a new strength like never before. They have new ideas, new inventions going on in their minds like never before. That you did just not call them to sit in the church. But you called them to do great things in the earth. And so, God, we thank you, Lord God, that they will grab a hold to this today. And they will move forward and be all that you have called them to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, I tell you, um, a lot of pastors' blessings have come from his praise. Amen. See, God always blesses us after the praise. Amen. You waiting to get something, then you're going to praise him. But you got to learn how to praise him before you get it. It's called faith. I believe God going to do this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get my praise in before I see it. Amen. Because if I don't get my praise in before I see it, I might not never see it. Amen. So I want to talk about just for a minute. Focus on your assignment. Huh? I want you to focus. Amen. Because you are not born in this season for no purpose. You were born to change the world. Amen. That's why it's so difficult. And the enemy is trying to stop you so you won't do your assignment. Amen. And they make you feel like you're nothing. That's why you got to tell yourself every day, I am somebody. And I'm a somebody that can't be stopped. Yes, we have trials and tribulations, but when I get through this, because I'm not going to build a brick house in this trouble. I'm going to put me up a little tent, because I'm going to sit here a few days. Because when I get tired, I'm going to tear the tent down and move to another destination. 
Amen. And so because I got to stay focused on my assignment, okay? So we go through things in life to capture your assignment, to take your focus, to let you think about that. Whatever has the ability to keep your attention has mastered you. So that's why we sometimes get a lot of wrong people in our life. Because the enemy is trying to master us. Because he takes our attention, we try to make relationships work that was never meant for us. To get our attention, because he already know he heard about, he heard God talking about your assignment in heaven. Amen? And so, you know, so focus is like a magnet. Focus is what causes you to be attracted. And it takes all your attention. So when God called us to preach the gospel, we may be sick or have issues going on, but guess what we're going to do? Preach the gospel. Why? Because we focus. Because focus is my magnet. Amen? And so sometimes you might wake up in the morning and don't feel like class. But if you remember where you're headed, guess what you do? You get right on up and take that shower. Uh huh. Put your pajamas on and go to class. <laughs> right? Because that's your focus. See, in every day of your life, something is coming after your focus. Huh? You, you know, you could be the next Messiah. Huh? They're going to lead all the people to be prepared to go home and be with the Lord. But you lose your focus. Because you keep asking yourself why you different. Won't nobody like Jesus. He still had to walk it out. Huh? He had to stay focused. You know why he prayed so much? Because he had to go back and tell God, you sure? Amen. And that's what we're doing in church. See, church causes us to stay focused. Amen. When we come to church, that's why sometimes I don't know how y'all make it missing two or three Sundays. Amen, because you're going to lose your focus. You're right on the verge of a great breakthrough, but you're distracted. The last one promised you that and could not deliver. Huh? Could not. You've been with the same animal three times. Are magnets. You know, magnet attract, you know. And you keep getting attracted to the same kind. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you got great qualities. Right? You got great qualities. So you gotta learn how to find you a place of focus. You know, and church is your place. Because, let me say this, the better you become, the greater you're going to get. But if you got low self-esteem, you're going to get low self-esteem. Huh? Right. If you don't fight for what you believe, you're going to get somebody not willing to fight for what they believe. So that's why you got to really learn how to stay focused. You got to talk to yourself in the mirror. Don't wait for people to encourage you. Huh? Don't wait on somebody to come pray for you. You got to have your own prayer. Huh? Your own relationship. Yes. This, you got to move away from past hurts. Past failures and past memories. They over. They can't hurt you no more. Huh? The only way they can hurt you is you concentrate on it so much you never move forward. Some of y'all in here today is dead and don't even know it. Because you're living in your past. And ain't nothing you thinking about your past going to change. Oh, no, you got to let that go. So you got to decide who it is you want to be. I'm, I came to really help you. I, I really. Because I know I'm somebody and you can't tell me I'm not. And I might not work it like you work it, but baby, I work my own side. 
Because God didn't make nobody just alike. Huh? My gift ain't your gift. I got my own gift. And I got to look in the mirror and talk and say, gift. Huh? Listen, you, do, you down and depressed because you're living in the past. Now, let me tell y'all something because, you know, I got to talk to my young people, right? Some of y'all ain't married. Let me tell you something, young ladies. Talk to you now. When a man meets you, when he see you, he already know if you're going to be a knight, a girlfriend, or a wife. He ain't got to get to know you. He already know you. Because why he was born like that. God put that in him. So you're trying to hate your sister and work your gift? He already know. And I know you to convince yourself he ain't had this. But he ain't looking for that. He already know. He already know. He already know. See, women fall in love on how you talk. But you ain't got to do no talking. You're doing with your eyes. You fall in love with what you see. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you. All this dating stuff going to stop in a minute. Because he don't want you. He want what he see. I was married 38 years, I know. Huh? And when he came home at night, I ain't worried him about where he been, because that was it. How you know you was it, Apostle? He came home at night. Just saying. You must rebuke people who attempt to break your focus. You must rebuke people. Huh? That's attracting all your attention. You got to learn how to rebuke them. Why? Because how you going to hang out with somebody who won't do nothing? Huh? And you want to be a billionaire. And they not willing to work with you. Because they've been to the religious church. Saying you can't have all that. God made it for me. So you got to rebuke people. Even though they look good. Smell good. Act good in church. You got to rebuke them. Like Jesus rebuked Peter. He told Peter, get behind me, Satan. And he chose him to be a disciple, but yet he rebuked him. Why? Because he was taking away his focus. Trying to get you to think about something else. Hmm? Praise God. See? You got I, I really want to help you today. I really. See, see God, God didn't call me to preach to be pretty. He, he called me to help you some things you ain't got to go through. But you gotta say, you gotta say, focus. This is how adamant the devil is about stealing your focus. He is so determined to steal your focus that he will tell you you're sick. And every time you go to the doctor, they remind you that you're sick. And you shouldn't do spiritual things because you're sick. Huh? And your family agree with the doctor. You need to stay at home because you sick. God didn't call me to sick. God called me to preach the gospel. If that means you got to get in a wheelchair and roll it up there, because that's what you called to do. You got to stay with what God called you to do. Because he going to make you the enemies after your focus. 
My blessing ain't being sick. My blessing is following instructions. Huh? And I'm trying to help you because you got so many different people trying to get you to live out their vision that you can't live out your vision. And every time you meet somebody new in your life, they stay with you long as you helping them with their vision. But they want to hear nothing about your vision. And you keep connect, connecting with them because you think they're helping you. If they help you in the first time, they're not going to help you the second time, nor the third time. And guess what? You got to learn how to rebuke that and walk away. Why? Because you got a purpose. You know when they told um, Pastor Drumright, he had, Drumright had to leave this building, leave that building? He could have said, man, I don't believe God called me. Because every time, wherever I go, I got to end up leaving. Huh? That's, that's how the enemy works. So every time I take something from you, I cause you to lose a little bit of yourself. I start doubting me, who God called me. Oh, I know I'm helping you because some of y'all are here and quit. Some of y'all done quit because you think you got a, a, a school loan you can't pay. But go ahead and finish out the school. You worry about that later. Huh? Did, not, did it surprise God that you're going to have a student loan? No, it ain't surprising. But you, you focus on the loan instead of finishing. You got to get back to the finishing. Huh? And guess what? Stop looking for people to, to uh, clap for you. Clap for yourself. Huh? Listen, brothers. She might not see your good quality. But you still got them. So you got to stay focused. Right. Because I'm going to tell you, the more money you make, brother, you're going to get all the girls. Because the girls like, girls like weed. Girls like to travel. Girls like their bills paid. You just keep making the money, you don't have everybody. Why all y'all like him? You, did you see what he drive? Did you see where he live? Did you see where he take you to dinner? He ain't trying to take nobody to McDonald's. Huh? Yeah. I'm coming against your, I'm coming against your low self-esteem. I'm coming against it. You the man. God made you the man. Try to convince you, huh? You trying to show off with your girls, but let, let your girls take care of you. I ain't gotta try to convince you. I know you gotta know who you are. See, people can't get you out of church because you know what church keeping you, huh? Focus, focus. Your better life is about to come. But you'll never get it if you don't make it through this life. You got to make it through. Huh? And you make it through by your own conversations. Your mind is a very dangerous thing. Hmm? So, why do you think they came up with social media? Distraction. Because we're not wise enough to stay an hour and then do something else. Sometimes we stay all night, knowing we got homework, knowing we got assignments to do. See, it's a distraction. But that's why Jesus called the men that follow him disciples, discipline. You got to discipline your mind to stay focused. 
and stop trying to be everybody. Okay? My next point. Refuse any weight or distraction to your assignment. Lay aside every weight. Why? Because it got all your attention. Huh? You hadn't did anything productive this week because you were so distracted by last week. You got to let it's a weight. It's a weight. If you notice, every time you don't feel good, if you get rest, that go away. See? But what we don't do is listen to what the, our body is saying. Take a break. Take a vacation. I can't even afford a vacation. You can't afford not to have one. Why? Because your life is at stake. Huh? If you don't get a vacation, you ain't going to have no more creative ideas. Vacation gives you creative ideas. Amen? Things you hadn't even thought about. See? Pastor has been teaching y'all how to pray. In your house that you live in right now, I ain't got to even go. You got spirits in there. Demonic spirits. In your bedroom. In your living room. You know why you got them in there? Because you got the same old furniture from the other place. And demonic spirits live in furniture. And you sit there on that couch. Huh? Remember when you got it. What you did on it. Uh, Y'all ain't real up in here. <laughs> if you don't notice, you start feeling stuff in your body. Wondering where it came from. From the couch. I exposed a lot of devils in here today. Amen. So you, you got to take a break. Go on vacation. Sleep somewhere different. So the devil can't find you. Think about what it is God wants you to do. It don't take a week, three or four days is good. Think about where you're headed. You'll be surprised how close you are to your destination. But could not figure it out on that couch. So you got to lay aside these weights. That means you got to throw some stuff away. I know you like it, but you got to throw it away. Because it's your past. Think about, I want you to think, close your eyes a minute. Think about it. Every time you take a nap on that couch, what you wake up with. But you don't think it's the couch. Because the couch is material. But spirits hang out in material. Yeah. You know, and then think about when the last time you had it shampooed. If you had it shampooed. Right. That becomes a weight. It becomes a weight. And then time you want to break free from something, and you come to church and you break free, you go back home and come back on you. Where did it come from? The couch. Yeah. You got to think about it. Think about it. Huh? Right. So, you ever ask God why he didn't want you to have sex before marriage? Have you ever asked God that? It's a reason. He, see, God made sex. God created sex. But he created it for your pleasure, not for your pain. And every time you have sex outside of marriage, you have pain. I know you ain't used to church like this. Huh? That's why the enemy tries to get me to stay home. Because <laughs> this real church. Yeah. See, I want to be holy, but show me something. Show me how to get rid of this weight so I can be holy. Because I'm not a rebellious person, but I'm being controlled by something I don't know. And it's a weight. So it's a reason 
why God don't want you to have that pain. Hmm? And then when you get married, you convince yourself that marriage ain't good. I had more fun when I wasn't married. Because of, that's a deception of the devil. For the wages of sin is death. So I asked God, why? It seems like it's more fun when you're younger. You got more energy. You could try more tricks. I mean, I asked God. You know, I know y'all don't ask him. But I asked God, you know. You know, oh, I got another question. Oh, write this down. Oh, God. If, 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 if sex is fun. Holy, if sex is holy, then why that I don't speak in tongues when I have sex? <laughs> He's so karama sandere konorosi. Write it down. Write that down. Sex is holy. God made sex. But you know what we did? You know what we did? We made it nasty. We made it nasty. So then when we come to church, we feel guilty. Why you got your head down, brother? You done took what God made and made it nasty. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm not, I don't talk about people. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, when before me and my husband got married, we used to fight and everything. But we got saved. Why? Because we ain't had no Jesus. You know, and I was from the country. He hit me, I hit him back. <laughs> huh? But God didn't create that. We created that. Me and him created that. That's good. Because God didn't create it. God created everything to be good because he said it was good. He made everything good, but we contaminated it. Hmm? Now, this is what, to me, Pastor, our young people need to hear from the gospel because they want to live holy. They really want God, but ain't nobody talking to them about how to keep themselves. Huh? Because why? Pastors trying to keep members. But if I can help save your life, and I don't have to go through this pain and suffering, I want to go to your church. Because I need some help. Now, I'm going to be 65 next month. I still need help. Because I still have some urges. I know y'all past that. Y'all don't have urges. But I was married 38 years. And every now and then I look to see you over there. He ain't over there. Because he dead, you know. I was in Lowe's the other day. Picking up bags, boxes to move. I said in the middle of the aisle, God, where my husband? Because I don't probably be doing this. My husband did that. Huh? But I can't go out and make nobody pretend to be my husband. He got to make a commitment to me. I'm good. Huh? Yeah. I'm worth it. You going to the army for. I, I, I'm worth it. You working hard to get it. I'm 
This is good. I ain't going to sell myself out. Don't have conversations that are, that are not related to your assignment. Right. You know how sometimes we talk to people all night? And they ain't talking about nothing about your future. Huh? You got to cancel those assignments. Because that's a distraction. See, I, my only assignment God gave me today was help people stay focused. Get back focused. Your ministry was be over. If you wouldn't focus. You still have a ministry because you focus. And every day when you think you want to quit, one of your people call you. Pastor, I just need to talk to you. And you make up your mind again. I ain't going to quit. Huh? See, when you right on the edge of giving up, God sent somebody to remind you who I call you to be. Huh? That's why you can't hang out and have conversations with people who are not going where you're going. Because they ain't going to be willing to pray the price you pay. See, they don't know. They didn't read the articles about you. Huh? They scared of articles. Huh? They, they can't understand why you let people talk about you. They don't understand your call. They don't understand how God blessing you like this. But they don't know the price you had to pay. Huh? So they try to tell you to quit. That's why our, everybody you hang out with ain't your friends. Some people are your jealousy buddies. And they're trying to get you to quit so they can take your spot. Because they can't get it till you quit. Lay aside every weight. Rebuke yourself when you don't talk right. Get in that shower and talk to yourself. I get in the shower and sing because they won't let me sing public. But they can't stop me from singing. I sing in my shower. You might not want to hear how I sing, but God want to hear how I sing. I say, God, you know, you call all these great pre people to preach. They could just sing a song like Pastor Durham, right? He just sat up here and be preaching that while he'd break out of one. I said, God, why you ain't giving me no breakout? He said, because y'all give you a breakout, you lose your focus. I'll give you something you can handle. Okay. <laughs> Break relationships that do not feed your obsession. To complete your assignment. You got to have an obsession. Huh? You see, uh, you know, when I, I be listening to uh, Ja'Kalen Carr and all these great young ladies that sing, you know, they had to have an obsession. Because not only they competing with people in the world, they also competing with their relatives who sing so great. You see what I'm saying? And then once they see, hear mama sing and hear uncle sing and all those people, They'll start convincing themselves, really, I may not be able to sing. But look how many, how much, how many people's lives they have blessed. Because they didn't quit. Because they could have sit there and listened to mama for the rest of their life. Because one of their friends might say, you can't sing like your mama. But I want people to sing like my mama. Huh? God gave me my own gift. And a lot of times we don't fulfill our own individual gifts. Because we look at somebody else and do something simple to what we do. And then we women, we compete with other women. Huh? Because most of the time we want something they got. And we don't know what they got is a mess. Yeah, I, I, I saw a man I wanted. I, go for him. I ain't care. That was my friend's man. See, when you're not saved, you do anything. Anything. You ain't got no character. You just, see, that's why God called me to preach, because I tell y'all the truth. Y'all lie to each other. I, I, 
don't want my girlfriends, man. Yes, you do. That's why you get them open it up for them. When you know she ain't home. That woman been in my house. I know you didn't tell that truth. And you know why I could tell it? Because I've been delivered from it. I'm not ashamed of where I've been. Yes, I did it. But I ain't doing it now. All right. Let's read Matt Mark 10. I'm going to close right there. Y'all had enough. Ooh, this has been a good anniversary. Amen. Mark 10, verse 28 says. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed you. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left his house or his brother or his sister or, or, or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold. Uh, now, in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution, huh? You're going to be persecuted. And in the world to come, eternal life. Now, let me tell you something. This ain't going to be popular, but I'm going to tell you. Your family tried to get you out of this church. You, they tell you, you give all your money to that church. They tell you, and they know when you left home, they didn't even give you tuition money. Sit a day about them oodles and noodles. Huh? Yeah. But God said, he want me to tell you today. But God said, no person who have left their family for the gospel's sake will not be blessed. Huh? Do not let them convince you. That you made a big mistake because you came to church. Huh? You, your, look, listen, I'm not talking about your mom and daddy. But they 70, 80, still drinking liquor. Huh? And Proverbs tell me if you drink, you ain't wise. And you will never be rich. I'm just saying... I'm not saying disrespect your parents, but they, you cannot make them lose your focus of what God called you to. Because you're going to be the one to help save their soul. So they don't have eternal damnation. Because nobody in your family been saved until you got saved. You are on an assignment from God to be Moses to your family. Hmm? They call you brainwashed. They call you manipulated. They call you all kinds of names with their crazy broke self. Huh? Huh? That baby went off to school, lost her mind. She a Christian now. No, she went off and gained her mind. And now you about to get saved so you can have eternal life. Amen. Amen. And so these are the people that I'm trying to show you that will make you lose your focus. You know, I can remember, uh, you know, because we had the party house. And I can remember everybody came to my house to party, you know. So when I got saved, you know, the tip time for real. See, I know y'all did it once, but I, I had to do it a free time. And when I got saved, 
for real. For real. I could not hang out <laughs> with my mama and my sisters and brothers. I had to separate myself. I did. And I had to separate myself because every time I go home, I start back gossiping. You know, I start talking about people. Everything I had gained, I lost. Because it's familiar. And I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be accepted with my family. But one day, when I was fasting, the Holy Spirit told me, your family will never get saved as long as you keep doing what they do. Huh? It was my assignment. It was my assignment. So when they lied on me and talked about me, I could have called them and tell them what I thought. I, when I went to family reunion, when they go behind the tree, start smoking weed, I had to get in my car and leave. Because I used to smoke weed. I liked it. But I gave it up for Jesus. So I ain't going to hang around because it's going to pull me. Right? So I had to get in my car and leave. I had to separate myself. And they talked about me. All of that, and I knew it. But their relationship with Christ became more important to me than me just being friends with them. Amen? So as I look around at my congregation now, my sisters come to church with me. My mother was sitting in the sanctuary today. You know, when you Baptist, you don't go to church on snowy Sundays and ice. And it might rain. We don't go to church anymore. But she was in service today. She 86. But it came with a price. A price of sacrifice. And that's what I want to leave with you with today. God gave you assignment. And all your assignments ain't going to be about money. Some of your assignments are going to be about saving souls. If you notice, our young men, our young little brothers are watching you. You got to teach them the right way. I don't want to be their hero. You're their hero. Right? So you can't go show them your good because they don't know how to handle it. He say, I got, bro, you got a gun? No, I ain't got no gun. I ain't planning on killing nobody. You got to teach them. Because you're not home when you're the only man in your house and you got a little brother at home. Your mama have no control on them. They're in games. You don't even know. Because you're not there, you're in college. You got to save them. Because they are doing what they see on TikTok. And your assignment is to save your brother. That's your assignment. And you might like to go to the shooting range and shoot guns. I'm not saying you can't do that. But when people say something to you, you don't jump out your car and start shooting. They will because they're young. Don't be saying that ain't your responsibility. It is your responsibility. For your, for your siblings to live, it's your responsibility. Because they're going to love you enough to do what you say. And you got to start taking ownership to that. Because they're getting in gangs at eight. At nine. Mama don't even know she at work. Huh? We got to work too. You see your pastor on the front line? Trying to keep us from not being places we need to be. He on the front line. He giving up his life. You supposed to be having his spirit. You got to take on that same spirit. I might not walk and march with him, but I can at least save my brothers that's in my house. I might not have got over my fear, but guess, I still can participate in the battle. I still can participate in the fight. If you ain't willing to die for nothing, Huh? You're not going to have the life you expect. 
You got to be willing to die for something. I'm in ministry today because my nephew got killed at 15. Shot in the back three times. Huh? I want to feel bad about it, but I can't because he was sipping. He was sitting a, a, a dirt bike out of a man's house, out of his garage. Him and five other boys. All six of them got shot. He was the only one died. Because God was calling us to pastor. <laughs> See, I got, that's why we connected. So ministry started 28 years ago because of a little boy named Jamal Elliott. Shot in the back. Killed at 15. My husband made a commitment that no more young boys would die. And they still die. 28 years later. We got to take ownership. We have a responsibility. You know, I have a daycare. I have an academy. And Christian people try to pull their kids out of my academy. Because they don't see the vision. But does that make me quit? Because they didn't call me to it. God called me to it. Huh? If I don't say but one, that's good enough for me. Amen. Amen. So you got to get passionate about keeping your focus. They're going to tell you you ain't good enough, you ain't doing right, but as long as you know that God called you and you working to the best of your ability, don't let nobody stop you. And when I want to quit sometimes, you know what I say? I come to church on a Sunday and preach. You know what I'm going to preach? I'm going to stop them all. Because huh? you think I'm trying to make you happy. I'm trying to help me. Amen? Because we got assignments. And that's why I'm so excited about Pastor Drumright. Pastor Gregory Drumright. Ambassador of this new generation. Teaching people how to love God. And stay with Christ. Teaching young people. You know, because if he wanted, if he Young man, if he wasn't Pastor Drew right, you wouldn't listen to nothing he said. But because he is who you say he is, you listen to every word he say. And that's what an ambassador is. He representing the kingdom. That's an ambassador. Representing God. Amen? Can we stand and give God some praise? Come on, can we stand and give God some praise? Remember this. Fight for your focus. Fight for it. Battle hard. Don't let nobody stop you from getting to the school. If you want to get that master, get that master. If you want to get that doctor, get that doctor. Don't let nobody stop you. If God put in your heart to start a business, start that business. Don't depend on just people in the church. Make your business conducive to everybody. Learn how to be a people person. Talk to everybody. How you doing? What's your name? Don't be color stricken. The only color you need to be strict with is green. Because everybody money can spend. Amen? Be a wall that strengthens your concentration. Build a wall. You know how to build a wall? You know when somebody hurts you, you don't speak to them no more? You build a wall. Build a wall that will keep your focus, keep you concentrated. Uh, I can remember when I was in nursing school and I took a test on uh, circulating the blood in the body. First two tests, I made a 68 and a 67. And I wanted to tell myself I couldn't be a nurse. You can't do this. You can't circulate the blood throughout the body. Right? So when I left that day, I made up with my mind. Who wanted to be the nurse? Me or them? I made up with my mind. That was my calling. That's my assignment. I want to be a nurse. I really want to be a pediatrician. But I fell in love. I thought was love. Got distracted. 
never became a pediatrician. I'm just telling y'all all my business, ain't it? Huh? See, see, love can wait. Stay focused on your assignment. Huh? I got distracted. So the third time, she's going to get the same test. Third time. I went home. I made me a song. I wrote a poem about blood. Huh? I dreamed about the blood. I saw the blood. Huh? And when I did that, when I went to test to take the test, that next day, I made a 99. Huh? I ain't make no 99 because she gave me a grade. I was focused. And the girls in my class who never passed the bar, the, the nursing school bar, what are you crying for? I passed the test. All right. All right. Huh? You're not going to discourage me because I'm crying. You don't know what I had to go through. See? But they was trying to take my focus on who God called me to be. And you got people right around you right now trying to take your focus. And that's why sometimes, I'm going to say this, and we, I'm going to close. We hide behind the gospel. So we don't have to be real. Huh? If people think I know God, they don't mess with me. But when it's time to really know him, I can't get through nothing. Because I done tried to fake everybody out. Now, I'm the fool. I got faith. Because you can't play with God. He'll give you everything your heart's desire. Everything. But don't play with it. When you fall short, say, God, forgive me. Don't be acting like you didn't. God, forgive me. I feel short. God say, okay. I'm going to place it in the sea of forgiveness. Let's go again. See, it's people that condemn you. God don't. Do you know what condemn is? You ever seen a house that had a sign on it? Said condemn. That means it's unusable. So people do that to you. So that you won't feel like you're usable. Now, when we do wrong, we should be convicted, but not condemned. I'm still usable. So don't let people do that to you, because now you don't want to do nothing for God. It wasn't even God. It's the people that contaminate you. Amen? And so this is why, praise God, that we fight to teach the word of God. This is why we try to help you when you, when you, um, we fall down, but we get up. Yeah. See, I have responsibility to get up because if I don't get up, you can't get up. Now, just because I got a title don't mean I don't fall. Huh? But sometimes we don't have nobody to pick us up, so we got to pick ourselves up. So I'm telling you today, you feel like you have fallen? Get up. You are not condemned. Huh? Tell God I'm sorry and go back to living. Because the people that are condemning you don't know Jesus at all. Amen? I pray I'm helping you today to let your past go. Let it go. Start living for tomorrow. Amen? Because nothing back here I can change. You know, I used to tell myself, it's hard to be a woman preacher. You know, you're not accepted. But you know what? You, sometimes we're not accepted because we think that in our own mind. God didn't call me to be accepted. He called me to do what he said. Amen? So I got to convince myself, especially people I don't talk, talk about me, I make sure I go to their church. I got to visit. <laughs> And I got to clap for them and smile at them. Huh? Why? Because I don't care about your talk. I'm going to be who God said that I'm going to be. And I'm not, I might not be, you might not never listen to nothing I say because I'm not your pastor. God wouldn't even give me you. But these people over here, they listen to everything I say. Huh? You got to stay with the people who will listen to you. Not the ones that don't, they're, they're intimidated by your gifting. 
Amen? Now let me say this, because I got to say this, because it wouldn't be justified if I didn't. COVID. I got to talk about COVID. Um, it's unfortunate, my bishop has said, that it's unfortunate that a lot of people are going to die from COVID in 2022. It's unfortunate. When all they ask you to do is get a vaccine. But because you're a Christian, you think it's not faith to have a vaccine. And you're going to die before your assignment is finished. I'm not telling you to get a vaccine. But if your assignment is not finished, your assignment is more important than you dying with COVID. Amen. In another 30 days or so, I want to just let you know so you be in prayer for apostle. Because I'm not a preacher to have secrets. In another 30 days or so, I'm going to be going in the hospital having a bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant means that for the last two years, almost three years, my body has not made red blood cells. I have missed no services. I have missed no preaching assignments. I have had to get blood transfusion about every week or so. I'm going to get one tomorrow. I already know. But I'm not telling you this to feel bad for me. I'm telling you this to let you know I'm unstoppable. I am not sick. I am unstoppable. So when you see me next year at number 20, if a apostle got up, you can get up. Amen. So, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your people. We thank you, God. We thank you for their assignments. We thank you, God, for what you have called them to. We thank you, Lord God. They, they are new creatures in you. And they walk by faith and not by sight. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now in their elevation. We thank you, Lord God, for the doors that you are opening that no man can shut. We thank you right now, Lord God, that they can do all things through you who strengthens them. We thank you, God, that we'll stay focused, that we'll complete their assignments, that we'll finish whatever they, you have given them to do. And God, we thank you and we praise you for being a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give God praise. Huh? You ought to praise him for what's coming. You ought to praise him for what's coming. If you're expecting something, you ought to praise him for what's coming. Come on, you ought to. Thank you, God. Thank him in advance. Thank you, God. For my miracle. Thank you, God, for my healing. Thank you, God, for my deliverance. Thank you, God, for my new house. Thank you, God, for my new marriage. Thank you, God. Yes. Hallelujah. For my new career. How many of y'all want to go to the moon? How many want to go to the moon? Let's take one trip. Come on, where your vision at? Hallelujah. Oh, we just thank God. I'm, yeah, I'm crazy. Yeah. Praise God. I, I hope when I go to the moon, they put me on TV. Amen. Because I want to do stuff like that. Huh? I want to do stuff like that. All right, we ready to give? All right. Why don't you just put a praise on your giving? Why don't you just put a praise on your giving? Right. This is what 
what we're gonna do. All right. Before we give, can we praise God for her healing real quick? Come on, everybody. I know you feel it. Come on, I need you to hit the floor if you believe God for deliverance. I mean, sit in there. I, I don't know what faith for simply going to do, but sit in there. I need you to seal it in heaven and seal it on here in Jesus' name.
much I give about 10 people. Just praise God for me. Do you believe? 
ain't a show and this ain't a picture this is an altar hallelujah if you didn't come to praise him what you doing here God brought us out and the woman of God said I'm not scared she said I'm gonna be here next year this time in other words she said I'm bonded in earth and I'm bonded in heaven the least you could do is slap your hands together and say do it 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 and if God gave you a miracle do it do it do it do it do it surely you 
can believe God for something. Do it, 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 do your body he'll attack your praise and if that's, that's the first if that's the first thing the devil has shut down that should be the first thing you give back to God after you just backslid and sidestep that's the first thing after you come out of COVID the first thing you should do is jump out your bed and, and give God his praise back glory to God the woman of God said can I get 10 people to praise God for me but it's a hundred people in here. Do it, 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 it, do it, 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 I don't want you to go anywhere. I know this is a long service. It's anniversary. Amen. I know it's the playoff games going on. Whoever was going to win, they was already going to win. It's already destined. Amen. Glory to God. But I just have some remarks. There's some people that came a long way. And I want to hear them before they leave. And so please don't go anywhere. Amen. Let's receive Apostle McKenzie who has taught us. Hallelujah. The Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to give. Amen. Because we can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard we try. Amen. We see all the ways to give online. I want everybody to do either two things. Give a seed of 219 or a seed of 119. Amen. You decide which one you're going to give. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Hallelujah. If you want to give on, uh, do your giving. In person, virtually, cash app, or text us. Amen? Amen. Amen. 219. We want to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. I'm going to give. Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I will not do. Because I believe. I was able to pay double tithes last year because I asked God for a certain amount. I thank God. He's a good God. Amen. You know, I, I've, I've seen a lot of miracles during this process. Uh, my insurance company, I don't know what kind of insurance company you have, but called me this week, and they're going to give me a bank card while I'm going through this process. And uh, that's a big deal, ain't it? They're going to give me a bank card to buy gas and pay my, you know, uh, when I park in the deck and all that stuff. They're going to pay for it for me. If I need to stay in the hotel, I can stay in the hotel on that bank card. Okay. Have y'all ever heard of such stuff? Never. Amen. And uh, the medicine I've been taking, it costs about $3,000. Uh, each month I take it. And I ain't had to pay nothing. So, you know, you need to go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. They got people that can pay for you. Do not, not go to the doctor because you don't think you have the money. They have people have money for you. And that's one of our things with African American sisters and brothers. We don't go to the doctor like we need to because we think it costs us when we can get it for free. Amen? I don't know if you heard this commercial on TV said, we scared to go get a cancer test 
but cancel test cancel you, you still die with it if you don't go get tested for it you know so we got to be wise on our health you are the most important person in the whole world take care of your health amen all cancer is curable with early detection y'all hear me because some of us mad because my mama died or my cousin died you know but it might not be an early detection Amen. How many of y'all anyway in here have had cancer? Amen. And you still here? Look at it. Get your hands up. Yeah. Because God is a healing God. Amen. So as we're ready to give, and uh, to me, that's not uh, sad. That's not a sad message. That's a message of hope. Amen. Take care of yourself. You are important. Amen. I'm going to be whole after this. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I'm going to be on the airplane going everywhere. Huh? I'm going to be having a good time. Huh? I'll tell you when my husband comes, he better come right because he got to take me somewhere. Amen. <laughs> I'm, expe I'm expecting big things. Huh? I'm expecting to buy me 25 acres of land and build me a, a youth, youth center. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, and a church, and a daycare building, and an academy building. Oh, I'm ready to do some big stuff. Huh? God going to make a way. Don't ask me about the money. Money going to show up because I showed up. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm helping somebody here because y'all scared. Mm -mm, don't be scared. Go on through what you got to go through. We ready to give? Stand up. Follow instructions from our uh, ushers for the back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know that many people have already given. Amen. They give again. But <laughs> <laughs> the apostle has given us a word of life. A, a life application word. This is something that you can take and leave here and before you get out into your car you can live according to it and if she's good enough to give you a word that will help change your mind the hardest thing about you to change is your mind then she's good enough to call for the Lord's offering and so um, for those of you all who count it not robbery and only the who count in that robbery to give again. Do it as unto the Lord. I want us to be a blessing in case she wants to go get that Maybach. You know, they told me, I let people change my vernacular, my pronunciation, but when I uh, took mine in to get service and, I, and they asked me, that's your car out there. Which which car is yours? They said, it's the Maybach. They said, you're the first person to say it the right way. So, mm -hmm. Apostle, Maybach. Mine. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> when she go get that Maybach, we don't want her to have to wear, we don't, the, we don't want the insurance company to have to pay for the gas. Mm -hmm. no, if they gonna do much. it, let them do it. I was driving one time and uh, I had some important people in the car and, and we pulled up, we had to get some gas, we've been driving all day. And they said, uh, Reverend Drummond, let us pay for the gas. I said, no, 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 you're good, you're good. And they said, no, 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 let us pay for the gas. I said, no, 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 you're good. And they said, Reverend Drummond, right, this is on Netflix, let us pay for it. I said, go ahead on and pay for the gas, Netflix gas. Netflix got plenty of gas money. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But in case she want to put some rims on it or something, we want to go put some rims on it. Yes, it. I know it. She she's flossy like that. Mm -mm. She flossy like that. Um, we want to make sure that we at least leave uh, her blessed for pressing her way. She didn't have to come. Amen. And she could have came and just did a little of nothing, but she came with a word for our souls and our next generation. Amen. And so 
Um, this is this is nothing. Two nineteen. That's nothing. Yeah. Amen. Y'all wigs cost more than that. Your weed habit costs more than that. In two weeks, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. The young man said yes, it did. He came one day. Some of y'all remember that day he came here, Apostle, and he brought a whole bag to the altar, and he dumped out all the wrappers of the backwoods and the um, the, uh, the blunts and the, uh, the cigarillos and Swisher Sweets. It was hundreds of them. i never seen anything like that in my life. Amen. And God has delivered him from that ever since. Glory to God. 219, that ain't nothing. Amen. That's a that's a that's a flight to Charlotte and back. You talking about going to Bali. You can't even give 219. Hallelujah. You talking about getting married. You ain't gonna be able to afford no wedding if you can't give 219. You ain't saying nothing to me. You trying to buy a BMW, you complain about 219. Amen. Glory to God. That's gonna be nothing. Where I'm headed, that ain't gonna be nothing. Glory to God. I was doing a revival one time and I asked them to give a hundred dollar sacrifice. And the woman came to me, she said, if if a hundred dollars is not a sacrifice, then can I give more? I said, certainly. She came back and put a check for ten thousand dollars in my hand. In that same revival, this was the last I was supposed to do three nights. And they held me over two additional nights. And there was five churches in Tampa, Florida, trying to get me to come. I said, they'll have to fly me home and fly me back. I'm not, I'm not, I came for this church. In that same revival, this, that was the last offering of the whole revival. She gave that on a Saturday morning. She got mad when I split it with the church. She said, the Lord told me to sow that to you. I didn't even remember what I had prophesied to the lady. But apparently in that revival, I spoke to her womb that God was going to open her womb and that she was going to bear children. Didn't remember that. And I also prophesied love. Didn't remember that. A year later, she called me back and said, I need your address. Why? Because I'm sending you a Western Union. I went to the food line down there on Market Street, and it's a gate stop. I went to the gate stop down Market Street to get, great stop, to get, excuse me, to get the Western Union. I, she never told me how much it was. I ain't going to tell you how much she sent me, but the people at the gas station said, we've never seen a transfer this much. We're going to need you to come back because we got to call a money truck to give you the I said woman of God I, I never talked to her again when I left Tampa I never talked to her she said I've been trying to get in touch with you but nobody would give you give me your number she said I want you to know I'm engaged to be married and she said I know I made a did things wrong prophet but you said this and I'm also pregnant You don't know what you're forfeiting. Amen. You don't know what you're forfeiting. And I want to be a blessing to the woman of God today. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Everybody lift your offering and say reaping the harvest, sowing the seed, expecting abundance to intercede in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Just come from everywhere. Get up and just push the ushers out the way. Just come from everywhere. Glory to God. And give. Amen. Amen. And you can, you can, if you want to swipe, we have a credit card swipe, debit card swipe. Amen. If you want, uh, you can give food stamps. Um, see me after service. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, listen, before you leave, you can go ahead and grab your purse and things. We're getting ready to go. But before you leave, I want you to hear from some special people. Stay right there, Josh. Glory to God. Amen. I want to thank God. Can you help me to thank God for our uh, mind team and our AV team that done the video and our praise and worship team and everybody that's working. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I, I, I want you to know, t this is the 19th anniversary and a lot of people, you know, would probably get more excited about 20 years and as I was flying back into 
the U.S. last night, I was thinking how, how, how more important 19 is to me than 20. When the 20th gets here this time next year, I'm going to be ecstatic, but let me tell you right now why I'm excited about this time. Because it was this time 10 years ago. In the ninth year of our ministry, 10 years ago, when I asked the Lord for permission to close the doors to our church. And not waiting for an answer, I concocted my own plan. And I met with the few folks, the few ministers, the handful of folks and three ministers that was with us at that time. And I told them my plan. Even though I hadn't got an answer from God, I said, y'all, I've given it nine. I'm going to go all the way to ten. And I said, if the church hadn't truly been restored by ten years, I will have given God everything I got. I've lost everything, given all, lost all that family my mom was talking about, friends, lost houses, lost cars, paid the church bills before I paid my own bills, watched my mama help me do it. And I said, I don't think God can require more from me than that. I said, but I'm not going to celebrate 10 years with a handful of people. And I want you to know that was in January of 2012. And it was in January of 2012 that God sent me back to my own alma mater to mentor two young men. And in January of 2012, I met this young man standing right here. And he didn't even know I was a pastor. And when he found out I was a pastor, I told him, don't tell nobody. You remember that? And in January of 2012, we started working on leadership initiatives. Nothing to do with ministry, but everything to do with ministry. And what was supposed to be a meeting with one or two came a meeting with five, then ten, then 15, then 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, then 40, then 45, then 50 in the lobby of a dorm. And none of them knew I was a pastor. And I forbade him from telling them because we were just supposed to be working on leadership. And Josh came to me and said, whatever it is y'all doing, I want to do it too. And it was with Joshua Lee and Cameron Moore that we started 10 years ago this year, the Citadel Campus Ministry. And this was our first campus ministry president. And in January of 2012, we were meeting in the green room of my house. And Josh and Cameron pulled together an amalgamation of students who said, we want a place to worship. And we found out you was a pastor and we're coming to your church. But I was trying to close my church. But before I let God tell me not to, I gave God just enough to obey. And that was, I'm going to give it all my, I got the last nine years. And I want you to know between Cameron myself and this young man right here we labored and didn't know what we was doing didn't know why we had met didn't understand anything about it and come January of 2013 when Apostle came for the first time we celebrated our anniversary with over 300 of Citadel's own members in one year God turned it all around and so I want y'all to hear from my son in the spirit, Brother Joshua Lee. First and foremost, um, happy anniversary, Pastor Drummond. Happy anniversary, everybody. Um, this is a, a cultivation and an opportunity to give God praise for not only the things that he's done in our individual lives, but what he's done for all of us collectively. And if you have a family, if you have friends, it's like it, it'll make sense if you celebrate birthdays and anniversaries 
in your own little sphere around of influence. But it's, it means a lot different because God is in all of this. And so from, oh my God, <laughs> 10 years ago, um, I, I would have never thought that God would have continued to bless you in the capacity that he has and bless everybody here. Um, it's, it's been a long journey, and I'm grateful to God for all that he's done, not only for, for our pastor and for this church, but for those that have continued to give their lives to ministry. And so for that, I want to say thank you, Pastor. I want to say thank you, God. And I look forward to the next 10 years. I really do. I really do. Citadel, look, can I hear for Josh Lee, everybody? Bless you, son. Love you. And I went and did a Sunday night service in Washington, D.C., or Maryland. We had enough people from Maryland to start a church in Maryland from the DMV. And many of them have moved here and stationed here. And uh, Bishop Joel Peoples, the city of praise. Bishop, I met Bishop's son when he came to A&T for a campus visit. If you're in ministry, you know who Joel Peoples is. Mega church, mega church in, in Maryland. And I didn't know who the young man was. He was sitting next to me at a banquet during a homecoming weekend. I don't remember what I said to him. But whatever I said to him, he went home and told his daddy. And he said, Daddy, there's a man in Greensboro, North Carolina, that saved my life. I didn't know he was praying that his son would get saved. This is the pastor's son. I didn't know I was sitting next to the pastor's son. Bishop Joel Peoples got in touch with me and said, you have to come. And I went on a Sunday night, and it was snowing and icing. And they, were, they had moved to cancel the service. And he stood up and said, you know what? We're going to have this service. The man of God is in town. And I met, I didn't meet her, I just ministered. And little did I know then that one of those young people would become attached to me. And I'm going to go ahead and say for life. But for the past is nine years. Amen. God has restored her and blessed her and she is beloved and she comes to us today all the way from Maryland. I want you to hear from prophetess Megan Stevenson. Amen. Come on up here, woman of God. Glory to God. Come on up here. Come on up here. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all receive her one more time. You surprised me. I didn't even know you was here. <laughs> Never do. Ooh. Peace and blessings, everyone. Ooh. Ten years ago, you were going to close the doors, and I... When I learned of the, the testimony then, um, I remember saying at the prayer retreat that was January, he was going to close the doors. And that, October, that November, I met, I met him of 2012. So this year will be coming into 10 years ago. And um, interestingly enough that Joe Jr. would say that he saved his life because that was my testimony just the same. I remember the same night that I met Pastor Drumwright um, without intentionally meeting him was the same night that I saw myself driving off the Beltway ramp and running into a tree. I never had thoughts of suicide. And I tell my testimony often because you never know what your yes means for somebody else. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because by far I am not, but I'm striving to live holy and I'm striving to keep my yes. And it's because of his consistency that I stand here. It's because of his yes that y'all are able to love on me and celebrate me. But I thank God. I tell you, every time I get a chance, I'll never take an opportunity for granted to be able to celebrate him. Because I would not be here if it was not for his yes. If it was not for his counsel without a microphone in his hand, I would not be here. I would not stand here and be able to apologize when I have done wrong because you taught me how to live in integrity, privately and publicly. You taught me how to forgive easily. This is what I learned 10 years ago and would still learn over the next nine and a half years being with you all. So it's not just a celebration for our pastor, it's a celebration for the Citadel. 
because we have come a mighty long way. And I may be five and a half hours up the road, but my soul is always attached here. And I don't know about anybody else, but I came to give God my best yes. I came, oh, don't start with me now. I always get my refreshing when I come here because you took me out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. I remember the first time that he took me out of rebuke. He said, if you renounce it, I'll rebuke it. The deliverance ministry never left me. What actually took place, it birthed something new in me. So when you celebrate me, you realize I'm still a product of this. It's because of your yes. I can tell other people yes as well. God bless you, Citadel. I love you. Congratulations. Welcome to our new season. Welcome to our new address. Welcome to our new location. Welcome to the new gates. Welcome to I feel God. Well, I feel God. I feel God. I don't care what I did before I got here. But the Lord says he will convict but he won't condemn. But he able to keep me, to keep me from falling. Oh, I feel God and I thank him for his love, his grace and his tender mercies. This ain't no act. I'm just grateful for real. I'm grateful for real. He could have snatched the breath out of my body when I wanted to do my own thing. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph I love you prophet is making Stevenson everybody 10 years later hallelujah glory to God and because God is the greatest the greatest power I said 10 years later glory to God hallelujah amen I thank God millions didn't make it but I'm one of the ones who did it hallelujah anybody got a second win praise jump up and give it to them right now hey thank you God Oh, I bless him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come here. Thank you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want, she's, she's shouting. She don't even know I'm going to call on her. Come here, Minister Cher. This is the last person I want you to hear from. There's so many people here, and I'm so grateful. Amen. But she was in that meeting that I'm going to close it. If we ain't got nothing to show for it, meeting. She was there then, and she's here now. <laughs> Blessed up. <laughs> Glory to God. And I want you to hear, amen, because she is... Amen. Next to me and my mom, she's the longest standing member of the Citadel of Praise. Hey, God. Jesus. just give glory and praise and honor to God because I was in that meeting and I don't know what I would do if there was not a citadel for me and my family when I wanted to run when I wanted to be like Jonah and go the other way instead of coming to my Nineveh the citadel 
it was this man of God right here and even this woman of God right here that said keep going keep going you can do it you can make it I thank you pastor for all the prophecies I thank you for all the encouragement I thank you for helping me raise my children in the fear and the admonition of God I thank you I thank you ma I thank you for all the advice that you have given me to help me through all of life I thank God I thank God because my story is the same I would not be here if he had to close the doors of the church I would not be here I would not be here we would not have all of you my babies we would not have all of you so I thank God and I give God all the glory and the honor so man of God be encouraged pastor thank you thank you thank you for continuing to stand on the wall I would have forfeited all of this I thank God because the citadel is a place of reconciliation. I thank God. I thank God because you can look beyond my faults, my children's faults. Y'all have helped me take care of my kids. Y'all have watched my kids. I thank God for the citadel. Hallelujah. Y'all continue to pray for us that we will go stronger and mighty in God. God bless you. Glory to God. And yeah, her children are our first church babies. Uh, where is my son? I think I saw him. Jalen is our first church baby, and he is now 21 years old. Amen. And Maddie and Mason, I met them when they were zero. And twins, and Madison, she's 14, and, and twin brother Mason, 14 years old. Amen. He's a little man. Glory to God. And all three of them are going to be powerful in ministry. Glory to God. Amen. One of our uh, found founding members, amen, came back and rejoined the church last year amen sister april riley amen i love you glory to god one of our founding members he next to my mom he was the first person my whole family is full of preachers and we've been building church all our churches all of our lives and when i stepped out to start the citadel i met with my family uh in december and i told them stay where you are and i said i don't invite any of you all to come and join with me because our family had been at a church that we helped build from nothing. And he was the first person in my family next to my mother to say, the Lord wants me to come and help you build. Amen. I want you to hear from him. Glory to God. Minister uh, Lamar Owens, my first cousin. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring you greetings from Deliverance Tabernacle Next Generation under the leadership of my mother, Bishop Augusta King. 19 years. Pastor, priest, and message a long time ago. I seen enough to believe. And I believe in watching all the pictures that came across this screen over since 2003 to even 2009. I seen God elevate each one of those steps that we took. The thing about it is the people doesn't see that every place that he's been has only got bigger than where he first started. Even though he went from step to step, God gave him an elevation every time he moved. But in this season in 2022, the best is yet to come because the worst is behind you. But I come to prophesy to you today because I'm a true prophet of God and I only say what God says. God said in this move here, don't want for nothing because I'm going to give you everything I promised you 10 years ago that spirit fulfill itself. It was only worth the word came forth today because God needs the people to see and understand what God has his vision for you. But I'm believing in this right here. If I never say another thing, I want you to know today that Citadel, this step that you took today will not be your last step. 
this praise that you gave God on today will not be the last praise that you get. Because you missed the opportunity woman God was preaching to give God praise. But I understand why you didn't praise him when you did because you wanted to hear what the woman of God had to say. But what she said out of her mouth today, it will not be the last time that you will hear it. I believe God and so shall it be. God bless you, my father's children. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I know that's true because in Citadel can tell you, I told them when we got here, the Lord told me whatever you need, you can have it. And so I know that to be true, and I thank God for that word. In last year, Apostle talked about articles. In the last year, for the first time in my life, there were two negative articles written about me. And if you put together, we don't really know how many articles have been written about me, but we know that they are in the hundreds. And within the last two years, the world's largest and uh, most established news sources, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, um, National Geographic wrote an article about me, um, news sources out of London, the BBC, and everything in between. Out of all of those articles about my work, a young man wrote two articles, two articles from the same person who had never met me, never interviewed me, articles with misspelled words. <laughs> and not only were the words not the truth, but the information was not true. In the last year since you've seen me, out of hundreds of articles, Two from the same person. First negative articles. Talking about my car. Alleging that a home that I've been in for almost five years, I bought it with PPP money. I didn't even know they had a PPP in 2017. I wish, I wish they did. <laughs> and in the last year, I learned that everybody who say they're for you, most of them are not. Because what I learned, I didn't, it didn't bother me at first. I had met with people um, that are millionaires and billionaires that had prepared me. They told me, get ready. The attack is coming. And so when it first happened, when they first sent me the articles, I wasn't really tripping. I expected. I say nobody gonna believe this mess because it's mess. And what hurt me was when I found out people were excited that after all of the good news, there was something negative. That somebody, even if it was from an uncredible source, had to say they wanted there to be some negativity. And so I said, who wrote these? So we Googled his name. And immediately what came up was he was a felon. He had been arrested multiple times, not just locally, but the federal government was pursuing uh, litigation against him, not for robbing, not for cheating, not for violence, but for using his blog to extort influential people. And then I said, I ain't worried about this. Ain't nobody going to believe this because when they see the source, they're not going to pay it no mind. But little did I know, it didn't matter. We're in a day and a generation where people will believe a lie over the truth. A lie over the truth. And so two months after he wrote those articles, someone out of Raleigh, federal government, sent me a text and said, Reverend John Wright, you might need to know this. And I said, oh, God, here we go. And I hit the link, and it said that the young man who wrote the articles had just been found guilty by a judge 
of continuing to use his blog to extort people. And now he's going to jail for over 10 years. I don't glory in nobody's misfortune. But you better be careful when you touch God's anointed. I'm not here to say I'm the best and I'm the greatest of all time. But if 19 years says nothing to you, it should at least say that you got to have an anointing to stay in it this long. I have seen many pastors come and go in this time, but I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. We lost maybe three, maybe four people because of those articles and then people just started coming and people started joining again from all over the country and every time I forget about the people in California and the people in C Seattle and the people over in Louisville, Kentucky and the people down in Atlanta, Georgia they send the car to remind you remember we still your members we not there but we with you and people like uh, Vanessa Cunningham, Dr. Cunningham sent a word to us today. She said, Pastor, I've been with you the last eight years. I ain't going nowhere. Thank God for our online church. Amen. Thank God for Sister Yatanya Branch from Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's like she more faithful than y'all and y'all here with me. I thank God for all of our online church and we include you in this celebration. Amen. And I thank everybody for giving and sowing and believing God. The article alleged that we uh, take money from our members, but nobody can ever produce an email. You know, we got everything's recorded these days. Amen. I've never called anybody in our church and asked them for money because I don't have to. And all of our services for at least the last eight years have been live and online. Am I right about it? I've never had to. When we started our campus ministry, we had 200 people in the service and the offering would be $100. But them same broke college students are still with me today. And now they writing $1,000 checks. And I don't even ask for it. Now they building houses from the ground up. Soon to be executives business owners now we got we're gonna have our first wave of doctoral degrees come through here because now some of them they got master's degrees glory to God I never had to beg for money when I didn't have it God gave it to me when I didn't have it when we didn't have it and sister Cher, she was our finance director she can tell you she would look at all the people in the church and look at the offering and didn't even want to report to me but we seen God God told me keep serving keep giving buy their books if you have to pay their rent if you have to pay their tuition if you have to put clothes on their back if you have to and I didn't know if they was going to come or go thousands kept going when they got their degree but God blessed us with people who stuck and who stayed and I thank you, Citadel, for every last one of you from then until now. To God be the glory. Everybody stand on your feet. Amen. Thank you for obliging us for as long as you did. Amen. Before I give the benediction, I would be remiss if I didn't ask if anybody here wants to be saved. If anybody here want to give you an opportunity, glory to God. Amen. Everybody bow your head. Please, if you will, musicians, everyone, ushers, everybody, bow your head. I'm the only one looking around. If you're here and you want to be saved, you want to be, you want to be rededicated. Maybe you've backslidden. Maybe you've fallen back. And maybe you don't want this service to close without there being an opportunity for you to atone. With 10 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he'll be faithful and just to forgive you of them. God wants you to be saved. And if that's the case, if you just put your hand in the air, I'm just going to pray with you. Amen. If you put your hand in the air, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I see your hands. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Please, nobody looking around. Just me. Amen. I just want everybody.
glory to God, to be praying. Yes, I see your hands. I see your hands. I need to be renewed. I need to be, I need to be renewed. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, you don't have to do this in secret. Salvation is not secret. I don't want you to think that this is a secret meeting that we're having. But if you said that, if you lifted your hand, I want you to pray with me. And perhaps there are others who will join in as well. Let us pray. Lord, here I am, a sinner asking to be saved. Thank you that you gave me another chance to get back just in time. I confess my sins. The apostle confessed. I'm sure I can confess my sins before you today. I've charged iniquity against my relationship with you. God, please forgive me of every one of them and help me, strengthen me, anoint me to turn so I can fully repent. Jesus, I believe on you and in you. I believe that you came just to die for my sins. And so I confess you. I confess the gospel that you are the only true, wise, and living Savior. I believe on you in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you just prayed that prayer with me, I want you to open your mouth. Glory to God and give the Lord say, his praise. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I've seen your hands. Glory to God. If you want to get saved and stay saved, stay in the Lord's church. Amen. Don't pay attention to what the haters and the naysayers are saying. Amen. The most popular thing right now is to leave your church and leave your school and just go for broke but I come to tell you it's a setup and if you've been on the wrong road you can take the next exit that's all you gotta do take the next exit look at your neighbor I know you can't touch him but just look at him in the eyeball eyeball to eyeball and say take the next exit I don't know who need to hear that take the next exit tell your other one tell him take the next exit hallelujah in Jesus name Amen. One more time, Apostle. Apostle, we thank God. And we're going to be believing God for you. Amen. I thank you for going public because we know what to pray for. When, when will you, when is that procedure scheduled? Mm -hmm. First of March. If you will let me know, we're going to be fasting. We're not just going to stand with you. We're going to fast with FACC. Have y'all figured out we just one church now? Amen. One church. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you.